Hey guys, and welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at what Tesla presented at the AI day to yesterday. So they actually have this humanoid robot called Optimus, uh, which we're going to see. We're going to see like how's the performance, what is actually like capable of doing. Then we're going to see some of the capabilities within AI because they're using a lot of AI from their cars to actually just put into the robot. And then the robot can navigate around in its environment do different kind of task and, uh, task and so on based on neural networks and AI that they're using in the cars as well. But first of all here, let's just see a video of the actual like, robot and see that it's in the introduction and then we'll dive more into like the act like things behind the robot and also the AI driving and navigating the robot around in the environment. So this is the first uh, prototype that they made. They have like, actually spent around a year developing this robot here. And they also have like another version coming up, which is actually like a bit more like these, they're driven kind of like mechanical parts, electron electronics and so on. It's actually like covered behind like some kind of like body or like a shell in the nearest version, but that is not capable of walking yet. It will take a couple of weeks. Uh, they said yesterday. Here we're going to see the robot doing different kind of like maneuvers. It's walking around, doing some dancing moves, uh, waving with the hand and so on. So these are like the basic things that they have actually like um, implemented. And that they actually, like, they just did it from scratch. Like they did everything from scratch. They just created the robot from scratch. Now they're doing all of these different kind of things. And you can compare it to like, for example, Boston Dynamics and so on, which you guys probably know of. the first time the robot has operated without a tether was on stage tonight. So let's see some examples that the robot is actually like picking up a package, walking around, walking around the engineers here in the office. It can place the different kind of like boxes and so on. So it can actually like make mirrors and then it can operate around in the environment uh, with the use of the full cell turn computer. So here we can see a robot um, acts like performing a task. So this is what the robot acts like sees with the camera. So they're using the same cameras and the same computer and even like the same neural networks as they do in their uh, in their cars. And then the robot here is actually like just doing this uh, segmentation. So it's segmentating out different kind of objects in the scene. And then it can walk around based on what it acts like sees. It can like differentiate between different kind of objects. It can even perform tasks in their in, in their factory. So it can do like simple pick and place task right now. Even with pretty good accuracy, you can just see the accuracy here of their um, segmentation. So they're just segmentating out every single pixel in the image. And then they just like uh, assign that to a class. So these are just some of the basic tasks that the robot is actually like capable of doing right now. They can just expand uh, expand these tasks here to like whatever they can think of. If we have a human robot that can walk around, they have actually like hand capabilities. It can carry things like it can carry like payload uh, with their hands. It can walk around and it can, it can even like balance while uh, picking up things, delivering things like boxes and so on. And then they can actually like just use their uh, like planner, their computer vision techniques within like deep learning and AI from at uh, their car so there's pretty much the same like if you just think of the car as the robot like how is the car navigating around in the environment is using like gps information is using the eyes and the brain so one of the differences between like tesla's humanoid robot um, the optimus bot and uh, like for example the boston dynamics atlas robot is that this robot here actually like, has a brain it has eyes with the cameras and then it has a brain it can navigate around in the environment by itself where boston dynamics uh, is actually like hard coding what the robot needs to do. This robot here can do tasks in the environment uh, by just like looking with its eyes and using its brain. And then it will just keep on learning and training over and over and over until it can like do all different kind of tasks. So in the end, you should actually like be able to just tell the robot some commands and then it should be able to figure out on its own, boil it down to a couple of sequences of tasks or like a sequence of tasks that it needs for, to perform. Uh, and then we can do like a lot of different kind of things. Like only the imagination um, is the boundary of like what this robot here can, can act like be able to do in the near future or like at least in the future. If we're talking about like five, uh, ten years out in the future, this is just really cool. The project progress that they made again in just one year. Um, I can't say this enough. This is just really crazy and just mind blowing.
So here we're just going to see the nearest prototype. So the first one I showed you is their first prototype where they just have like all the ele electronics and the mechanical parts, uh, which is not covered, but we're here, they're, they're more focused on like actually like making a production ready uh, robot. So this will be more uh, like the robot that's actually like going to mass produce and that you can buy uh, as a consumer later on. And the robots that were actually like walking around in, in, in the different kind of like warehouses, production lines and so on. So this robot here is not capable of walking yet. But Elon said that it shouldn't take like, uh, it should only take like a couple of weeks before this robot here is actually like able to walk around as the other robot. Because like, again, there's not really that many differences from this prototype to the first one. They have like solved the basic task of like balancing the robot, uh, controlling the number of uh, degrees of freedom that it has, doing like inverse kinematic for different kind of tasks and so on. And now we're just going to see what is really crazy about like how they can use the full self-driving in um, in the actual like robot. So it has the eyes from the from the car. It has a fisheye front camera. It has the left pillar camera and also the right pillar camera. Then they do this uh, panoptic segmentation. So it acts like segment segmenting out every single pixel in the frame. So I'm just going to pause the video here so we can actually like, see what is going on. So they actually like, just segment out every single pixel in the frame. And then it can act like assign all these individual pixels to a class. So we can actually like have, for example, like uh, a walkable, uh, a walkable pathway. We can have different kind of like boxes. We can see we even have these plants, which is segmented out. We have people walking around with this green color because that is also um, an object segmented out in this panoptic segmentation. So we have different kind of like segmentations. We have like instant segmentation, panoptic segmentation, and just uh, segmentation in general. Where you use this to actually like determine what are the different the, the different kind of objects in the environment, um, and also just assigning each pixel to that class, and then they can actually like extend that to 3D. So this is what they're using um, in their full self-driving car as well. So they're using something called an occupancy network where they actually like just uh, extend these 2D segmentations to 3D. So they actually like just have these different kind of like voxels. So they have the voxels in the environment. Then they just predict for each of the individual voxels with the occupancy network if this uh, voxel here is actually like occupied or not. And then it can make this really nice uh, volume representation of the world that the robot is walking around in. This is the exact same thing that they're doing with the car. And this is just like some of the new things that they're doing. And this is some of the newer things within like state of the art within like computer vision and AI. And Astrog even like predicted that this will be the future within computer vision, like solving different kind of com computer vision tasks in the real world by using this occupancy network for doing this 3D volumetric um, representation of the world. So again, they just have all these voxels representing the whole environment. And then they just predict if these voxels is actually like, occupied or not, because when you're walking around in the environment, you don't really you don't really care if, if you're walking into like a box, a plant, like a person or a car or something like that. It doesn't really matter. You just want to know like there's an object here. This is not a walkable path. So I can't go through this object because there's voxels in front of me that is occupied. And then it can also use these voxels here. When we look uh, at the voxels from time step to time step, then we can also like predict uh, the velocity, acceleration, and even like jerk of all these different kind of objects that we have in the scene. And it can determine if these objects are static or dynamic when it's walking around in the environment. So this will be pretty nice for doing acts like um, for doing acts like planning of different kind of tasks. So it can walk around, it can navigate around in the environment based on like, for example, let's say we set a, a GPS location, then it just walks towards that a GPS location and then it figures out path while it's acts like performing the task or while it's acts like moving in the environment because it just does this uh, occupancy network here it has this really nice representation of the environment. It knows everything about the environment and then they can just do the path planning as to do in the car um, as well. They can just translate like basically they can just translate everything from the car to the robot because in the end, the car is also a robot that is just navigating around in the environment. So here we're just going to see this video here through. We can see the person here walking. So when we have a dynamic object, it will act like have a color. And then we can just see the robot here navigating around. We can see all the voxels um, that are occupied. And then we're also going to see something uh, that they're actually using as well for we have this um, volumetric depth rendering. So they also need to have really good uh, depth re representation for the robot as well to be able to navigate and do different kind of tasks in the environment. So here we can see this uh, production table here that uh, where the robot was actually like performing a task a couple of videos ago. They also have visual navigation. So I have actually, I have actually like videos about that here on the channel where we're detecting different kind of features in the image. And then it just 
we do this visual odometry. So this is basically just visual odometry that they're doing. So it can predict uh, the camera's movement or the robot's movement and path by just having this visual navigation. We detect the key points, then we just track those key points over the number of frames throughout this video here. And then we can actually predict how is the robot moving around in the environment. And then we can see down here at the bottom, we have this top view. We can just store all the different kind of key points that we have. We can project those out into 3D, 3D world 3D world points and then um, we can actually like, create a map so we can both map the environment and we can also like localize where are we in the environment with the robot so this is really cool and and this is basically just combining like all this data of art of things like techniques models and so on from AR and deep learning just combining all of them uh, combining it with the best engineers in the whole world and then they've just created these really nice cool AI real life applications. So this is actually like the hardest real life AI application, which is basically just having eyes, having a robot navigate around in the human world, which is really crazy that they can do. Again, they're just trying to replicate the, like the human. We are like born with two eyes and a brain, and then we just navigate around with in the environment like that. And then we just keep learning over time um, how to perform different kinds of tasks. So we can basically just map that, um, like how people are actually like, uh, how people act like are we can just directly map that to robots cars and so on and then they're just trying to solve all these different kind of things and even though like in the future maybe robots can perform better than humans at doing different kind of tasks for sure they will be better to drive cars than humans um, maybe some tasks in the future they will also be better to perform but again like robots they can just work like the whole day they don't need like pauses that they, they don't like have feelings they don't have bad days they can just keep on working so they can just perform a lot of different kind of tasks and it will be way more efficient than humans so thank you guys for watching this video here again this is a really exciting video um, i'm really excited about the future we're going to cover way more about these different kind of like individual details from this video in uh, following up videos where we're going to go way more in depth with some of the specific parts for example with the occupancy network because this is really crazy and it is going to be used within computer vision um, in the future as well and it's probably going to be the standard within computer vision for doing real life applications so thank you guys for watching this video here and again remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video and also like this video here if you like the content and you want more of this in the future I also have computer vision and deep learning tutorials here on the channel where i go over the basic but behind like some of these different kind of things with like how we can construct neural networks the basics behind neural networks how we can create our own neural networks train them to do different kind of computer vision tasks so if you're interested in one of those tutorials i'll link to one of them up here or else i'll just see you next video guys bye for now